Hi, in this video we are going to look at a very famous problem called the traveling salesman's problem. The outline of this presentation is going to be like this. Uh, we will initially look at what is a traveling salesperson's problem and why is it so popular. We will look at, an, uh, look at an example of a TSP using a graph and we will also look at a naive solution using the brute force approach. We will also try to understand why brute force approach is not at all practical and therefore we will look at some other approaches for solving the traveling salesman's problem. The traveling salesman's problem is regarded as a very hard problem in computer science because to come up with a solution for the to come up with an exact solution for the TSP is very hard if the input size is very large. Um, a typical computer may take months or years for finding the exact solution for a TSP problem. Now let us understand what exactly is a TSP problem. So if you are given with a list of cities and the distances between each pair of cities or it can be distances or it can be anything, it can be the cost of going from one city to another. Okay, we, we want to find, what we want to find is the shortest possible route or the shortest possible cost that visits each city once and returns to the original city. Uh, the TSP problem is a very famous NP hard problem which cannot be solved in polynomial time. This is an example of a TSP problem. A graph is shown with four vertices 1, 2, 3 and 4. I have, uh, 1, 2, 3 and 4 which represents cities and uh, the costs for costs from um, both directions are indicated. It, this means that uh, cost of going from 1 to 2 is going to be 10 and the cost of going from 2 to 1 is going to be 5. I mean this is applicable in real scenarios as well because if you if you take an example the the flight charge for, for going from city A to city B there may be a flight charge but at the same time the flight charge for going from city B to city A may be different. So that is why we accommodate, accommodate the graphs having two costs between two different costs between the same vertices. Now our task is to find out a minimum cost path from a starting vertex uh, which visits all other vertices exactly once and come back to the starting vertex. For example, I can start I can start at one. I can start at 1 and then I can go to 2 and then I can go to 4 and then I can go to 3 and then I can come back to 1. This is a feasible solution. And uh, th th there can be other feasible solutions as well. For example, I can choose a path like this. I can initially go from 1 to 2 and then 2 to 3 and then 3 to 4, 3 to 4 and then again come back to one. This is also a feasible solution. Also, it is to be noted that uh, you, we should not revisit an, an already visited city. For example, uh, suppose that we have gone from 1 to 2 and then uh, we are going to 3 and then going to 4 and again going to 2. This is not allowed. Uh, and maybe you can get back to 1. But this is not allowed. You cannot visit a city more than once. Now let us try to understand how to solve the TSP problem using a brute force approach. Suppose that we have got n cities and then we consider city 1 as the starting point and the ending point. So possibly you can have n minus 1 permutations of cities can be generated and then you, you have to calculate the cost of every permutation and then keep track of the minimum cost permutation and then return the permutation with the minimum cost. Since we have an n, we have to calculate n minus 1 factorial permutations, the time complexity will be of the order of theta of n factorial. We will see this with an example in the next slide. Now let us apply the brute force approach on this graph. Suppose we, our starting and ending vertex is chosen as 1. And the possible permutations are, you can start from 1, and then you can go to 2, then you can go to 3, 
then 4 and then go back to 1. Another possible solution is 1, 3, 2, 4 and 1. You can also choose this permutation 1, 4, 2, 3, 1. You can also look at, you can also go by 1, 2, 4, 3, 1. Or else you can also choose 1, 4, 3, 2, 1. Uh, you can also have 1, 3, 4, 2, 1. 1, 3, 4, 2, and 1. So these are the possible paths that you can select. And now we have to calculate the cost of each of this path and then find the minimum path. Now you can pause the video for some time and calculate the cost uh, across all these paths. Once you calculate all the costs, you will come to know that this is the minimum cost path. That is from, that is go, starting from 1, 2, 4, 3 and 1. And this has a cost of 35. All other paths are having a cost of more than 35. So this is our minimum path. So if we trace the path in our original uh, graph, it will look like 1, 2, 4, 3 and 1. So the yellow line indicated here represents your minimum cost path visiting each vertex only once and getting back starting at 1 and getting back to 1. So in this example, uh, number of vertices that is n was 4 and uh, we had to generate three, uh, n minus 1 n minus 1 factorial different permutations that is uh, in this case it is going to be 3 factorial which is 6. So in this case uh, since the number of vertices was only 4 we had to generate only 6 permutations and then calculate the calculate all the costs and then return the minimum cost so this becomes very difficult when the value of n is going to be very large now let us analyze the uh, the growth of the number of paths according to the number of cities we have already seen uh, a graph having four cities and the number of paths were six and if the number of cities are five there, there are going to be 24 paths and if you see here if uh, the number of paths are 10 uh, the number of, uh, number of cities are 10 then the number of paths are going to be this much and once it becomes 11 it is going to be this much so assume assuming that suppose you have you have to calculate uh, uh, a minimum cost path for 21 cities then it means that you have 20 factorial paths and 20 factorial is a very large number. So if you calculate 20 factorial, it is going to be approximately 2.4329 into 10 raised to 18, approximately. Suppose that you have a computer which can, uh, which can perform, say, 10 raised to 8 operations per second. 10 raised to 8 operations per second then anyway it will take uh, this number divided by 10 raised to 8 will give you um, 2.4329 into 10 raised to 10 seconds and once if you calculate the number of years corresponding to 2.439 into 10 raised to 10 seconds it turns out to be this number this is something close to 771 years and the problem size was only about we were dealing only about a 21 vertex problem remember that in real life situations we will deal with much larger problems and uh, it will be it will take more than uh, more than this uh, it will take years of time to calculate this if you if you are uh, making use of a brute force approach so it is quite impractical to, to make use of the brute force approach to solve the 
TSP problem. The graph shown here indicates the real map of uh, 46 German cities and uh, to find a find to come up with a solution for this problem uh, it, it we will have to generate the 40 since there are 46 cities we will have to generate 45 factorial paths and then find the minimum you, can, you may try to find uh, the number of years it will take to find this and then try to understand how complicated it is so since the brute force approach which had a complexity of n factorial uh, is not not uh, practical in real scenarios we have some other solutions some other approaches for solving the tsp problem one of them is called the dynamic programming approach the dynamic programming approach is slightly better than uh, the uh, the brute force approach it has a complexity of n square into um, uh, n square into 2 raised to n complexity which is slightly better than n factorial you can uh, you can actually calculate up to say 30 30 city problem you can even calculate a problem with 30 cities using the n square into 2 raised to n dynamic programming algorithm and this is also not practical beyond that and uh, heuristic approaches will give you answers uh, quickly some of the heuristic approaches are nearest neighbor approach constructive heuristics and colony optimization etc but remember that uh, these uh, heuristics approaches will not give you uh, the optimum solution rather it will uh, give you a solution which is very close to the optimum solution and to learn more about uh, these uh, heuristics approaches you can refer to this wikipedia link shown so in the next presentation we will uh, learn about the dynamic programming approach uh, which reduces the complexity to complexity uh, to n square into 2 raised to n. Thank you.